Hello all, I thought I'd give a quick run through of my um, Bluetooth heater controller. Just plugged it into the loom, boots up. We get the no temperature sensor at the start because I actually wait for a while to get a few readings before we actually um, show what the temperature is up on the screen. Otherwise it's a little bit jumpy about -y, so just to average it down a bit. So this is the basic startup screen. You can see the current room temperature over here in Australia. Of course, it's summer, so don't need a heater at the moment. But nonetheless, I can still play around with it with one sitting on the bench beside me. So from here, we can actually choose whether we want up and down the temperature using the up and down buttons. So we've got the up button here. See the set point I can increase. Likewise, I press the down button, I can decrease set point where we want it to thermostat around now if we want to change from thermostat mode to fixed mode just hold the down button for a few seconds and up comes an option to select thermostat or fix so we can use the left or right buttons to toggle which mode it's actually going to run in we'll let this time out to take us back now if we want to see it in degrees Fahrenheit just hold the up button and there it is it's switched to the Fahrenheit and the set point also now shows in Fahrenheit um, people have possibly seen this detailed screen which is just to the left of this one in the menus which is the detailed menu screen um, same sort of deal I can set the temperature up and down just by pressing the button, we're in Fahrenheit mode at the moment up and down changes the temperature we want to be at if we hold up again, once again we'll tog back to Celsius and down allows us to toggle from fixed uh, mode in Hertz or back to thermostat mode in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit depending on how you've picked it so to turn the heater on we hold down a center cut button for a couple of seconds. There we go, heater's turned on. And the first thing it does is start heating the glow plug and runs the fan, which is a body fan which blows over cool air and also through the combustion chamber. So you can see the glow plug power is slowly increasing up until the maximum power it's set to, which is around 85, 80 watts usually. Now the fan runs at around 1400 RPM for the initial start phase and that does get changed when you change your fuel settings. On the right hand side you can see we've got the uh, body temperature. I've got that hooked up to a pot at the moment so I can just actually adjust that and you'll see that change. So I kind of pretend it's actually ignited on the desk. So the left hand side we've got the actual temperature just shown as a thermometer. If we're actually in um, thermostat mode you see there's a little mark to the left, a triangular mark showing where our set point is against the temperature. If we go to fixed mode that will disappear so I'll just go back to fixed mode. We've got to actually press the button once to get it bright again and then hold it again to toggle it. You see that symbol's disappeared on the left hand temperature scale. And we're showing 3.2 hertz now as our fixed frequency. Um, the pump's just started. We've got a little animated fuel drip going on. Glow plug is running at maximum power. So if this was really a heater, it should have hopefully started igniting by now. So we've got the state of the heater being shown as igniting. So I can actually wind that body temperature up to pretend it's been igniting. Or ignited. There we go, it's transitioned to ignited. That's the heater telling us it thinks it's ignited. So we just have to keep on steadily rising that temperature up. We'll drag it up to about 120 or so, which is equivalent to your six red bars on an LCD. Pump's starting to speed up now. Low plugs turned off. 
so it actually thinks it's running with diesel pumping through it at the moment, which it isn't. You probably hear the pump ticking away in the background on the bench. 100 degrees. That'll do, 125, that'll do. Now this is just going to run up to full fan speed and pump rate to get the thing hot. That's just what it does. It does that for about five minutes or so and eventually it transitions to the uh, run state. And here the fan's getting faster. My voiceover's probably been drowned out by the noise of it all. Now the time at the top is driven by the real-time clock within the uh, unit. So that's got a battery pack up on it. If you disconnect this from the power and plug it back in just like I did before, you can still see I've got accurate time, which is 20 past 9 here in Australia at the moment. The Wi-Fi symbol at the top there is showing that we have an access point available we can connect to. And in actual fact, if it doesn't say AP underneath that symbol, it means I'm also connected to my home Wi-Fi. So I could actually bring up a web page on my phone, which is my camera at the moment, to actually inspect this. Likewise, I can run a Bluetooth app on my phone, and if the Bluetooth is connected, a little Bluetooth symbol will come up next to that Wi-Fi icon. So still trying to heat up the heat exchanger, get everything stable. There we go, it's transitioned to running now. So this is a normal run state. And as you can see the target pump speed is 3.2 and it's steadily, slowly backing off the pump rate and fan speed to be for that set point. So now once it's got to that point it will just sit there forever basically providing you don't run out of fuel. Now I'll turn the heater off. All I have to do is hold that centre button down for a few seconds. Right, first press lights it up again bright. Second press. So that's another message coming out of the heater saying it's shutting down. Notice the uh, glow plugs turning back on. Fuel's dropped off really quickly, and that'll very slowly go down to about 0.4 hertz and then shut off. So at the moment it's just trying to dry out the combustion chamber of excess fuel. There's no such thing as when it's shutting down it goes to full power for a while, that's, that's a fallacy. So whilst it's doing that, we can all flip through some menus, go back to the other one, you see it's shutting down on the main basic menu. Here's our clock, we can actually go in and change our clock if we hold the up key. So we can change the clock there, press OK to return, or we can go down and we can set our timers. At the moment I have two timers, the idea is you can set the start time and stop time. of each of those timers, so we'll go up got once means it only runs once and then it'll self clear or we can toggle that to repeat so the timer won't go away each time it runs we go up, we can actually be disabled or enabled just by left or right clicking like so or if we hold up 
Oh, I've changed this button. <laughs> Hang on. Let's go back down here. I've held down right, and now we can go into which days we want the timer to be active for. So we can navigate to which one, press up and down to turn on which day it's going to be active for. So press OK. Now it says hold right at the moment because we've selected that particular menu, but if we move off it, it shows you which day was active. So it's just saying hold the right key to toggle in. So we go back out like so. And of course over here we can start setting the time. We can hold down the buttons to increase or decrease that time. Like so. And press OK or the center key to store the values. And you'll note now at the top we have a timer set. It's got a little timer. It's timer one that's been set. And because we're in re repeat mode, we've got a little looping arrow around the bottom of it. So we can press the center button to go back to our main menu again, which is the clock. This menu here allows you to sort of see it clearly, whether you're thermostat mode or fixed mode. So you can toggle between those there. Move up to the next line and get degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. And up the top here, we can go in the pump priming mode. Now this thing thinks it's still hot. We'll just back off the temperature. So if I press right, it's now trying to prime the fuel pump. You can press anything to get out of it. Famous last words, just press left to get out of it. <laughs> so back to the main navigation line. See the IP addresses of our station mode, which is what you get is connected to your home Wi-Fi or the access point mode which is the unit itself which just hosts its own access point you can connect to with your phone. Here's your fuel settings. So you've got your minimum and maximum pump and fuel rates, the fan rates, the voltage you want it set to, the SN1 which is the fan speed division ratio, and PF5, which is a new feature available only on the newer ones, which is how much power gets put into the glow plug during start. So we can actually go into that. Oop. That upset it. Press the up key. Now enter the password. So it's the old 1688. Move to the next one. 16. Next. And press OK the centre button, and we're in. We can now go in and adjust these values as we see fit. You can pick which one you want. Away you go. Now, if we press the centre button, it says up to confirm save. So you have to actually press that to store it. And likewise, we can move across to the other screen, which allows us to deal with the voltage the heat is going to run at. The fan speed division and glow plug same sort of deal just go up you can change the, the values so obviously you probably should leave that fan sensor alone and likewise the 12 volt 24 volt everyone gets stuck on that on the normal low lids oh sorry lcds And if we go straight out and we're pressing OK up there, we'll just leave and not actually change anything. So we've now left the mode. If we want to go back and change them, we've got to put the password back in. So yeah, that's pretty much what's going on.